A red tide algae bloom has been plaguing the southwest Florida coast for months, killing lots of wildlife, chasing away tourists, and hurting the economy. So far, it hasn't hit the Tampa Bay area, but that could happen any day. The amazing thing is that something so tiny can cause such gigantic problems. Small scattered colonies of microscopic red tide algae live in the Gulf of Mexico all year long. Usually, their numbers are so minuscule that no one notices them. But every now and then, usually in the late summer or fall, the algae population 10 to 40 miles offshore explodes. No one knows why. The algae multiply rapidly into what's known as a bloom. As they spread across the water's surface, they stain it a rusty color, which is where the name comes from. Then winds and currents carry the red tide bloom toward shore. Once it's near land, actions by humans can make the bloom worse. Nutrient pollution from heavily fertilized lawns, agriculture, and leaky sewage lines and septic tanks can fuel the algae and make it worse. Toxins put out by the algae can kill fish by the thousands. The current red tide bloom, which has been going on since November, has also taken a heavy toll on sea turtles, killing nearly 500 of those, and manatees, killing about 100. It's also been blamed for the deaths of a dozen dolphins, several goliath grouper, and at least one whale shark. Its effects on humans aren't as fatal. Usually the toxins cause only mild irritation and coughing, but they can produce serious problems for people with asthma and other respiratory woes. Health officials advise against eating shellfish from red tide areas because the toxins can accumulate in their bodies, poisoning humans. The combination of toxins in the air and the stink of dead fish quickly drives people away from the beach and hurting businesses along the beach. Red tide is not new. It's been around for a long time. Spanish explorers documented seeing it back in the 1500s. However, it remained poorly understood until a scientist named Karen Steidinger of the Florida Fish and Wildlife Research Institute in St. Petersburg spent decades putting it under her microscope. In tribute, scientists renamed the species to honor her, calling it Carinia brevis. But there's still a lot we don't know, including how to stop it. For the Tampa Bay Times, I'm Craig Pittman.